I think we're at a pretty chaotic point right now in terms of formulating U.S. trade policy. And as you suggest, everyone's in favor of stronger trade rules and stronger enforcement. The question is whether or not we should be tearing up existing partnerships and mechanisms until we know what's going to replace them and how we're going to actually achieve that goal. So I'm worried now because, as Kayla suggested, a lot of clients and companies need stability. They need certainty. And that's not what we're finding at the moment. We're finding much greater instability. But here's a political question, though. If you look, and we were talking about this earlier this morning, there's been so many articles about small towns that are going to be impacted by this. In, certain, in some cases, layoffs or, or companies shut down in their entirety as a result of this trade war. And yet you see quotes from these employees who are being laid off saying, you know what, maybe we're just collateral damage in this, but we still support the president. That's uh, what a lot of people are wondering about. How long will it take till we see people recognize that the policies being put forth right now in Washington have not been thought through? We're looking for a real clear strategy. We're looking for ways to try to achieve that strategy, again, working with our partners and not alienating them. Right now, tensions with Canada are at all-time high. Uh, the president seems to think that we might be able to exclude Canada from NAFTA and conclude a bilateral agreement with Mexico. I think the U.S. business community is very concerned about that prospect because the three economies are so integrated and interrelated. We're also seeing tensions with China continuing to grow. So what, what's the answer? How do you do it then? If, if you were in charge, what would you be doing right now? Well, I think we have to be real clear on what our goals are. And we know we want to be able to boost U.S. exports. We'd like to be less reliant on imports. But again, we have to work with our partners to achieve that kind of goal. This notion of my way or the highway is not leading to progress. I've negotiated a lot of agreements and trade in other areas over the years. And we never succeeded by dictating to the other side what they had to do. We had to find a win-win solution. And I think we can do that here. Again, if we're thoughtful and we're strategic about that, and we really work both domestically and internationally to build more of a consensus. Because otherwise, I don't think we're going to be able to achieve what we're trying to do. Uh, Ambassador Jean-Claude Juncker comes to, uh, to the U.S. this week. Do you think there's a win-win deal to be done between the president and him, perhaps removing all car tariffs? Is that likely? Well, I think that will be discussed. President Juncker is coming with Trade Minister Malmstrom, and I know the two of them have been thinking hard about the kind of discussion they want to have with President Trump and his advisors. This is a great example of where we need to find a win-win solution. Last week, one day, Europe was a foe. A couple days later, Secretary Mnuchin suggested that we could do a free trade agreement with Europe if that's what they want. We've got to have a consistent strategy and steady leadership to sit down with the Europeans and figure out where we can rebuild trust and where we can find a win-win solution that benefits all of our companies. Because look at it. I mean, take car tariffs, imposing 20 to 25 percent tariffs on autos and auto parts coming into the U.S. is not going to help U.S. industry. But do you look at that as a negotiating position or do you think of that as reality? So if you were actually to try to uh, math out the, the, the potential outcomes, mm -hmm. do you think in six months from now we're going to be talking about the fact that we're in the midst of a trade war or do you think that we're going to be on the, on the flip side that there's going to be no tariffs on either end? I think tariffs should be the last resort and they have to be very carefully targeted and there has to be a much clearer sense of what are the costs and what are the benefits to the U.S. Putting on auto tariffs is not going to help the U.S. But what, do you, but what do you think the chances that we are really going to be put, put on auto tariffs? The reason I say that is one of the things that we've all seen uh, from this administration and the president is that he has uh, been a lot of, of bark, uh, a little bit less bite, but, but oftentimes the bark gets him where he wants to be. Well, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. Look at China. Right now, we've got billions of dollars of tariffs on China, and last week the president threatened to go to 500, meaning put tariffs on $500 billion of Chinese exports to the U.S., which is nearly all of their exports. It's not going to just hurt China. It's going to hurt U.S. workers and U.S. companies that depend on these imports to then re-export, and U.S. consumers who are going to see prices go way up. So, again, this should be a weapon of last resort. And what we should be doing is sitting down with our partners and saying, look, we want to try to reduce tariffs. How can we do that? Rather than coming up with ideas that are going to end up hurting the U.S. economy.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.